Oh shit! Huh. My music. Uh, yeah. Accidentally hit porn. That part. I will <laughs> later on in the show. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I will. I do it all the time. I promise. He don't go to Pornhub though. He goes to these. Whoa. Retarded ones. <laughs> Oops. Whoa. Hot mics. <laughs> This thing on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are live and direct. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh, what happened there? There we go. Yes. All right, all right. We need to get everything else together, though, don't we? Yes, sir. Huh? Do it. I'm the king of that. I just smoke this Is my mic on? I, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Good people. How are we doing? It is Tuesday, right? It better be Tuesday. I, I think it's Tuesday. Yes, sir. But you know what we... What, what I didn't do yet, did you? I'm doing it right now, sir. And what's that? I'm on it, sharing it to our friends. Uh, Y'all should do the same, by the way. Okay, Share well, it to your friends. I need to find it first. Well, Once yeah. I find it, then I can do that so that we can all be on the same page. It's out there. They'll see it. Maybe. So oh, good. Man from Brooklyn, I always call him the Sergeant at Arms. He's like, what the fuck? I got to come. <laughs> Oh, we wildin'. Do we have some music? Well, I had to share it first. Now I appreciate it. it. I can I can do what we normally oh. do, right? You ready? Tell our friends to do what? Well, we gotta oh. play music first, remember? That's right. See? Let's start the show. There we go. Let's start. You're right. If I ever leave you, baby. Oh. You can say I told you so. And if I ever hurt you, you know I hurt myself as well. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome, 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 good people. You are rocking with us on the Mega Quan Show. I am Mega. And I'm Quan. And we gratefully appreciate you being a part of our show. Y'all keep checking in and we keep coming back. Love yeah, it. well, that's a good thing. People check in and they, you know, check us out and all that other good stuff and we keep it going, right? Absolutely. All right. They should also like us on Facebook, check us out on Instagram, subscribe to us on YouTube. We're always the Mega Quan Show on all social media platforms. Well, wow, that's, that's true. Yeah. Except for Parlor, apparently. It's oh, gone. it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there sorry. you go. We ain't got nothing to talk oh, about. Oh, boy. Uh, you already started, see? Yep. Nope. Ah, you're a good one. You're a good one. That's right. See how they came up? I, I knew I should, we should have did the, the normal way. Ha-ha. Okay. I got it. You learn something new every day, right? It is. Absolutely, sir. Anyway, so let's talk about our last two shows. Oh, we was on vacay, though. No, no, no. The one before that, though. The one before ah, that was really, really good. That was. It was an awesome show. It was an awesome show. You remember the name of it? <laughs> 2021 is is 2021 the year of travel. There you go. With special guest host Kim Gray. Well, world traveler. World traveler. My bad. Kim Gray. Literally world traveler. I think she might be getting ready to go to the moon. So, AK. <laughs> so who knows? <laughs> I'm sure she'll oh, get a he- she'll get a hello beautiful up there too, though. I'm sure. <laughs> you know what? I did all that. I filled my 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 lighters up. My, be- my, you need, my torches. You and- need a light, sir. I got yeah. you. Sir. No problem. Shout out tonight. We're smoking CAO bones. Oh, yeah. That's what we bones. are smoking today. Compliments from our special guest today. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. So, what we, and what are we drinking today, sir? We are, well, I'm drinking a Uncle Nearest Neat. I, and well, I am, no, actually on the rocks. I forgot. I did, we did yeah. put a little rocks in put, there. We got the rocks and Uncle Nearest. There we go. See? Um. So, last week's show was a, um, are we traveling in 2021? And it was a very informative show. Um, she dropped some cool groups. If you haven't checked it out, take Sorry. the time and go back and look at the last episode. Kimmy well, G travels me. on Instagram. Not the last episode. <laughs> the episode before that. Um, check it out. Pretty dope. Um, and then our very last one was when we was on vacation. We was... Um, we had a travel episode and then we went to travel. Ah, yes, you see, we didn't even think of that then. We did. We, we was trying to catch up to Miss Kimmy Gray. That's right. Um, so yeah, today's show is a good show though. Oh wait, before we start talking about today's show. 
sports. I'm gonna let you talk about sports. All right. While I while I do sports, can you do me a favor and send our guest the Zoom information? I will. I will Thank post you. the Zoom link right now. No, don't post it. We're not trying to get everybody in. Oh, just tell them. Our special guest. Oh, not not everybody. Gotcha. That's all. Sorry. We're not trying to get everybody on the show today. Not today. Not yet. That's right. Not yet. No. We will. We will later though. Please check in after the show. Okay. So uh, who, who we, I need to send it to? Gotcha. Well, I sent it to you. You can send it to him. He said he was missing the meeting ID. Ah. Uh, he could do that. Gotcha. You yeah, know, logistics people, bear with us for just a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. we did have some football this weekend. Oh, ooh, 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 it was. It was, it was hard. It was it was a hard weekend for football. If you're a fan of, actually, most of the folks were mad. But it's okay. Uh, Rams played the Packers. That went probably about as expected because the Packers just spanked the Rams' ass all day long. They did. Yep. They did. Uh, well, then we had the Ravens and the Bills. That, uh, oh, my goodness. Lamar Jackson went down in that game. Uh, this is year two of him I'm just, yeah, crashing I, and burning. I, I feel you, bro. I'm just saying they I, lost, the Ravens lost that game three to seventeen. They did. And let me tell you, there was a gentleman that I mean, he went hard on my Steelers. When I say hard, oh, yeah. he went hard on my Steelers and talked about how the Ravens. I mean, he gave me the history of the Ravens, and I'm like, you mean the Colts? I mean, we want to give talk about history. But anyway, long story exactly. short, I can't wait to see him. I guarantee ah. you, he's going to avoid me because oh, yes, we got a hundred dollars on the line. Oh wow! And he owes that to me. Okay. And I don't want to have to go to his job, so I'm gonna wait till he comes <laughs> see me. <laughs> oh, he gonna come see you all right in about a year. <laughs> oh. oh, who else did we have playing? We had oh, Browns. They, they were like, when's the, when's the last time the Browns been in the playoffs? Eighties? Uh, nope, ninety two. Ninety two. Okay, there you go. Ninety. That's pretty close to the eighties. So yeah, oh, close enough. Too close. But uh, they lost to the Chiefs, seventeen to twenty two. Although they played a, a pretty good game, man. That was that was pretty good for them. Uh, let's see. Oh. We were actually watching this game live, the Bucks and the Saints. Listen, that was while a close we were game. On vacay. It was that was a close game. Well, yes and no, I guess it it it, it looked close. You got in, it, especially in the beginning. I just sent it to you. Not you. All I'm right. sorry. Okay, I was no talking problem. over you. My apologies. Yes, yeah, all right. I meant to mute my mic. The Bucks. <laughs> I I seem to be keep I seem to blah, blah, seem to keep cutting out for some reason. Mm. I think it's a loose cable or something. Just FYI. I think I was talking over you. It just no, sounded like I no, was. It's still doing it. It's not got. Oh, it's your got headphones. It. Just keep talking. You're fine. Okay. I got you. I'll fix that part. Appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, the Bucks beat the Saints. Oh, I know Atlanta was very happy. Where we were, there was like a million Saints fans, and they oh, shut the hell up. That was the quickest uh, rise up and we fall down. Hey. <laughs> Oh, oh, they man. were talking a lot of mess too. Oh bro. yeah, a in lot the, of mess. In the beginning, it was like, you know, couldn't stop them, and then all of a sudden, once once Breeze threw that interception, yeah, buddy, it was downhill. I mean, you literally this game had two of the best quarterbacks ever. So, yeah, Drew Breeze and uh, Tom Brady. Tom Brady advances again, always. So they won thirty to twenty. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. So next week, this weekend, actually, not next week, this weekend. Right. Two, both games are on Sunday this weekend, y'all. This is okay. the last. This is the last bit of football y'all gonna get before the Super Bowl. So you better get it in. Bucks Packers. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, it's, I believe the Packers are gonna win. I don't want them to win. I hate them. They're terrible, but I believe they will win. And then also after that, we got the Bills and the Chiefs. <sighs> well, if Mahomes don't come back, mm -hmm. then let's go Bills all day. If hey. Mahomes is there, I, I still give it to the Chiefs. I'm Ooh. rocking with the Bills. I know you are. I feel you. You told me that a while with back. The Bills. Absolutely. Who y'all got in the Super Bowl? Tell me. I want to know. Mm. So you got okay, so who you got playing the Bills? Bills versus I hate to say it. Bucks or Packers. I hate to say it. I, I feel like it's gonna be the Bucks. Okay. Tom Brady going to the suit. So you're saying Tom Brady will yep. host a Super Bowl yep. in Tampa Bay. Is, do, yes. Tampa Bay will host the Super Bowl. Yes. There you go. I I, I think that's what's going to happen. I think that's what they want to happen. So, yeah, I think it's what happened. 
Okay. So, gotcha. but anyway, let's get to our show today. Oh, yeah. We got a good one today. Interesting. Something that we really enjoy. It is. Care about. A lifestyle choice that we make. It is. We enjoy cigars a lot. Most definitely. Which is why we're smoking today. Yes. And we like liquor, too. Yes. So, so today we have two special guests, actually. Uh, one that's in studio and one that is on Zoom with us that's going to join. I'm um, going to start with uh, Cigar Ambassador Cigar Mike. Welcome to the show. Come on over. Yes, please join us this evening. And on top of that, we have Jay Madison from Uncle Nearest. Oh, so Jay, some good folks Jay Madison is about to join us. Okay. How you doing, Jay Madison? Can you hear us? I can now. Yeah. What's going All on, right, fellas? Right, what's going on? We're gonna start. With, Man, we're gonna start with 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 with, with Jay. Let's start with Jay real okay. quick. Okay. Let's do that. Um, say that again. I like Jay. You like Jay? He's, he's all right. He's all right. <laughs> Oh, oh, all right. you know, hey, man, I gotta tell you, y'all, it's, it's been a it's been a crazy night, and I I apologize, fellas, but I just had some stuff going with the family, so that's why it's been so so hectic. So I'm I, I gotta give y'all some love because I said I was gonna be here, so I I try and be a man of my word whenever I am, but uh, I know I can't stay around that long because I got that's, that's exactly why we want to start with you, Jay. We we my appreciate man. you being here. We really really do. You so, do look like Maurice Claret right now. Oh, here he goes. See, he got jokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I man. Lie, I'd like to give you a, give you a joke or two. Yes, <laughs> so Jay, tell us about on, what man. you do in Uncle Nearest real quick. Give give everybody a little history lesson. Yes. Well, I'm the uh, I'm the uh, marketing manager for uh, for Georgia, and uh, I've been with Uncle Nearest now for shoot it'll be three years in June, so about two and a half years. Came on like June of uh, 2018. Uh, and started out, you know, part-time ambassador, just really trying to um, get things going in regards to the market here. And, uh, you know, at the time when I came into the game, you know, no one really knew about Uncle Nearest and it was, getting, you know, slam doors and all that type of stuff. Totally new vibe now. <laughs> so, you know, we still got a lot more to do and a lot more to get out there. But I mean, folks know about Uncle Nearest, um, but we, that's, that's our mission. You know, we sell the whiskey, but it goes hand in hand because we, we, we make sure we tell the story too. We want to make sure we cement the legacy of Nearest Green. He was the first African-American master distiller on record in the United States. So that's our story that we talk about. So it's really a source of pride for me to talk about Nearest Green, but also, too, to be working for Uncle Nearest Inc., which, of course, is uh, African-American-owned. The first African-American-owned spirit brand that also commemorates an African-American on the label. So i uh, got some history-making stuff going on. So very, very proud to be part of that, man. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of my, my spiel. Oh, and last 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 piece, which is which is pretty daggone cool. It ain't just a story, but the fact that Uncle Nearest, y'all got the 1884. I like that. I got the mm -hmm. 1856 right here. Right. Uncle Nearest is the uh, most awarded American whiskey or bourbon of 2019 and 2020. So we got over wow. 170 awards. So it ain't just that's a story. Like you know, the juice in that bottle is kicking some serious butt too. So give a little yeah, folks man. trying Round to recognize. Applause for that. Round of applause for sure. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. How long has Uncle Nearest been around? Yeah. So we've been around since 2017. So we're still a young company, bro. Yeah. Still young. I mean, again, the fastest growing spirit brand in spirit history um, in all 50 states and 12 countries. So no one's wow. no one's ever come out that fast. You know, I mean, it's, you know, I, Mike will tell you, man, my head be reeling. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. What's going on? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, but it's 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 good, man. I guess it's a good problem to have. Uh, so we 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 doing good, man. And in the time right now with COVID, Black Lives Matter, everything else going on, you know, some some uh, some spirit brands are taking a serious hit. Whereas uh, whereas Uncle Nearest, we've been we've been doing well and actually thriving. So, uh, you know, thank God for that for sure. Congratulations, bro. Yeah. And again, thank Jay, you, we appreciate thank you. You know, you got stuff going on. We appreciate you stopping in and talking with us real Hold quick down. and giving people. A little education. I actually turned the music off so people can hear you and understand what you have to say because it's very important, you know. Well, definitely, I appreciate that. Um, I can give a give a quick spiel for the uh, for the story for folks who don't know the the true yes. uh, story and background of Uncle Nearest. You want me to do that? Yes, Love please. Um, I appreciate it. Sure, sure. Um, so Uncle Nearest, 
um, is actually, it was, is a real man. So his name was Nathan Nearest Green. And Nearest was like his nickname. Folks knew him, I guess, because he was nearest and dearest to people's heart. So Nearest Green uh, was a slave uh, in Maryland. Um, and that's where we know where he, where, he, uh, where he came from in regards of, uh, you know, before he came down to, to Tennessee. And uh, he came down to Tennessee to work for a man uh, by the name of Dan Call. And so that's why we have uh, Dan Call's farmhouse by the way, we own this farmhouse too. It's on 313 acres uh, down in Tennessee. We own that farmhouse. That's what's it's the originating place of Tennessee whiskey. So just to let y'all know that too, ownership from the top to the bottom. But Dan Call was a uh, farmer. Um, he owned a general store and the coolest thing, which is wild, he was a preacher. So Dan Call actually uh, found out some way somehow about Nearest Green being such a good whiskey distiller. And we think part of that reason was that Nearest Green utilized a custom from West Africa and where they use burned wood or charcoal uh, to take out impurities in their water and their food. Well, Nearest Green started using that at whiskey distilling. So Dan Call found out about Nearest Green, brings him down to Tennessee to be in charge of his distilleries. Um, so Nearest Green took, took, uh, took over all the distilleries and Dan Call actually had his own whiskey, which was D.H. Call whiskey. Uh, so Nearest Green is a master distiller over his, uh, over his whiskeys. Uh, miles down the road is another farm, family of 10, uh, another another farm with a uh, youngest kid. His name was Jasper, a little white kid, uh, very handy. So by the time he was around eight or nine years old, Jasper comes down to Dan Call's farmhouse to start working as a farmhand, feeding his cows and chickens and all that good stuff. Always getting into stuff. But so eventually, by the time he's around eleven or twelve, Dan Call sends the kid Jasper down to the distillery to help out near his green, because he's always asking what's all this smoke coming up from the hollow and all these mules going back and forth carrying stuff. So Jasper goes down there near his green, takes a liking to the kid, takes him up under his wing and teaches him everything he knows about whiskey distilling. And the kid is down there working at the distillery. Time goes on, it's the beginning of the Civil War. Uh, Jasper, the kid, decides to take a horse and cart and go out and sell the whiskey all throughout Tennessee and even down in Alabama. He's selling the Confederate and Union troops. Everybody's loving the whiskey. D.H. Call whiskey is doing good. Of course, Nearest Green's the one cranking it out. Uh, he's, a, he's a master distiller, so he's making it happen. Good juice. Um, and so by the end of the Civil War, uh, Dan Call, after getting, um, you know, getting a little bit of flack, because remember, he's a preacher, right? So getting a little flack from his congregation, his wife and stuff like that, like, man, you, you got a whole lot going on with this D.H. Call whiskey and stuff. So he decides to go into partnership with the kid, his number one salesman, right, Jasper. And so they go ahead and partner up. And so Jasper takes over operations of the distillery. When he does so, he looks to Nearest Green to stay on and be his master distiller. He also takes on the, the responsibility and pays every man an honest wage for honest day's work. And Jasper got a lot of flack for paying his, his, uh, the black folks as much as he paid the white folks. And of course, his master distiller, the man he grew up, the man who damn near raised him, he pays him real good. So, so Nearest Green's actually paid real well. He's actually a rich, rich man, whole family prominent uh, you know, uh, throughout history. And so eventually Jasper decides to, he finds another water source and builds his own distillery. He decides to leave Dan Call's farm. And he, like I said, he built his own distillery. And when he decides to move in 1884, which is on the front of that small batch y'all got right there, 1884, okay. that's the last year that Nearest Green touched, uh, touched barrels. So he retired in 1884. This man went from being a slave to a rich man to retiring in 1884. Uh, and that's the year that, that uh, Jasper left Dan Call's farm and went down to his own distillery. Part of the reason why he did so, because, you know, he got a new distillery, new equipment, all that stuff. Nearest Green, a grown man, he like, man, forget this shit. I'm, I'm good. I'm, <laughs> I'm retired. I'm not nerdy and all this new stuff. But right. he sends his three sons, George, Eli, and Lewis, down to continue working with Jasper. Jasper changed the name. It was D.H. Call Whiskey when he went into partnership with, with Dan Call. It was then... Um, uh, called Daniel's Whiskey. And then when Jasper moved down, he changed it to his own name. Everybody knew his name was Jasper. Everybody knew it was Jack. Changed it to Jack Daniel's Whiskey. So that's the whole real deal story. So that's where everybody's like, oh, wow. Yeah. So that, the whole time that all that juice was always Nearest Green. And so to this day, Nearest Green has his descendants. I mean, it's, it's been greens that have touched that whiskey from day one all the way up to today. So three of Nearest Green's descendants work at Jack Daniel's right now. So oh, wow. we do not, bad. yeah. Right, right. So, I mean, but because of the, the bond between the Jack Daniels family uh, and, the, and the Green family, uh, that still goes on now today. So we have a friendship with Jack Daniels, which, of course, is owned by Brown Foreman. 
but Uncle Nearest is Uncle Nearest Inc. owned by Fawn and Keith Weaver and investors. So we two separate companies, no business relationship, but we do have a friendship because of the bond. So when Jack passed away, the, uh, the, the distillery went over to his nephews because Jack didn't have any kids, but he went over to his nephews, the Motlows. So the Motlows were the ones who eventually sold it to Brown Foreman. So the entire time, everybody knew about Nearest Green. And so that did, it didn't come to where the, the history kind of fell by the wayside till much later uh, when Brown Foreman uh, had, had, the, uh, had the company and stuff like that. So, you know, as it, as it goes down, you know, we've, we've enlightened everybody on the history and, and know so much about it. Though. So that's what we do right now is make sure we tell everybody what's really going on. So when Fawn was doing her research, she did over a year's worth of research to find out all this information about Nearest Green and his family and the Motlows too. Um, she went to the town of Lynchburg, Tennessee, which is where Jack Daniels Distillery is. And the Dan Call Farm is like miles up out of the uh, out of the main town of the distillery. Mike was all, was with me. He synced it. He walked the uh, walked the grounds and, and was on hollow ground. Oh, okay, for sure. Hey, so, Jay. Um, Sorry. yes, sir. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so, so the uh, so the the Dan Call Farm is like out in the uh, up in the hills above Lynchburg, Tennessee. So when Fawn was doing her research, she actually came to town, was interviewing uh, descendants of of, um, of the Motlows and then descendants of the Greens and stuff like that. And then she came across this lady by the name of Sherry Moore. Sherry Moore's maiden name is Motlow. So she's actually a descendant of those of those of the of Jack's folks. Um, and so Sherry Moore had actually worked at Jack Daniels for over 31 years, was their director of whiskey operations, actually hired their last two master distillers. She had retired after 31 years and was then doing real estate. She came across mm -hmm. Fawn and said, guess what? Dan Call's farm is for sale. Fawn, by the end of the week, bought the whole farm. So that's how we got to own that. It's based upon Sherry. Sherry also mm -hmm. said, hey, if you ever think about doing anything in regards to whiskey, give me a shout. So that's exactly what, what happened when Fawn decided to go in and take on the whiskey business. She, uh, she tapped Sherry Moore, who's now our director of whiskey operations. So now we got Jack's descendant work back at the farm. And that 1884 you got right there was a small batch. That was small batch was actually curated by the first master blender, first African-American master blender, whose name is Victoria Edie Butler. She signs the back of that bottle. Victoria is Nearest Green's great, great granddaughter. So Jack and Nearest are back together again, man, which is a beautiful thing. That just shows the family coming back together. So we're all, we're all uh, one big happy whiskey family, man. So uh, that's, that kind of gives you some more insight on the whole story too. Wow. That's Full circle, huh? Yeah, man. It's crazy. It's Full crazy, circle. right? Yeah. Definitely yeah, crazy. And I would, I would, uh, <laughs> I would advise anybody too, <laughs> right? If, if, if you ever have the, the chance, but not if you ever, have, make sure you take the time and go to our website, unclenearest.com, unclenearest.com. <laughs> and uh, go to our website. You go on there. One of our investors is actually Jeffrey Wright. You'll know him as soon as you see him, the actor Jeffrey Wright. He tells the entire story of, uh, of Nearest Green on our website. You, you can't, it's, it's, it's awesome, man. It's about an eight or nine uh, minute short film. And uh, you watch that, it'll just blow you, blow you away for sure. So that's my spiel. There we go. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> hey, hold up real quick. Cause you know, I love doing that. Uh -oh. So for all those, uh, <laughs> for all those whiskey heads out there, can you please uh, let them know what the Lincoln County process is and what it means to whiskey, to everybody who makes whiskey today? Mm. So the Lincoln County process is what makes is what makes Tennessee whiskey what it is. So if you look on the side of Tennessee whiskey or yeah, so the thing that differentiates Tennessee whiskey from bourbon is just one process and it's that Lincoln County process. It's what most people know as charcoal mellowing. And charcoal mellowing is that custom that I'm telling you that Nearest Green brought from West Africa to take burned wood or charcoal as a purifier. So pretty much in the in Kentucky and Tennessee, sugar maple oak is plentiful. Sugar maple oak trees are plentiful. So that's what they use. They take sugar maple oak, cut it down in the, in the planks and they burn it down uh, into small uh, charcoal briquettes. I mean, you, you'll see them like this, like that's the charcoal melody. So pretty much they take the sugar maple oak, burn it down into small charcoal chips. And then they press that down in a huge vat. I mean, you, it's like the size of a room. Think about a wine barrel, but like the size of a small room. It's gigantic. And they wow. press that charcoal down real tight. 
the distilled spirit, which is the same process that bourbon goes through, the same distilling process that goes through, that spirit goes up over tube and drips down over that big old vat of charcoal, and then it seeps through there. It takes about eight or nine days. When it comes out at the bottom, that extra refining process, that's when it's Tennessee whiskey, that's when it goes into the barrel. So all I tell folks is bourbon is bourbon and, char and Tennessee whiskey is bourbon plus one. Yeah. That plus one is that charcoal mellowing, that Lincoln County process, which was developed and perfected by none other than Uncle Nearest. So whiskey history, he's a godfather of Tennessee whiskey, flat out. There it is. You make me want to play that yes, song. Sir. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of Tennessee whiskey. But I'm not. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Listen, Jay, you have been yeah. a wealth of knowledge. You know, I really appreciate you taking the time and opportunity to jump on here and just give people a little bit of gems and, and knowledge on you know uncle nearest bourbon and every i guess he wants us to look at his uh profile picture he did that, so. oh my bad my bad i, I don't know what i, 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 I was looking to, to scroll i pressed the wrong dang on but how do i get back out of here i don't want to press close because i'll be gone <laughs> no 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 you good. there we go um again like i said we just want to say thank you we appreciate you we know you got stuff no going on but thank you for taking this time to to Check jump on our little Quad show our little podcast, you know, oh, we appreciate it. Man, I appreciate y'all, man. And I wish I could have hung out a little bit longer, but it's, you know, stuff goes on with family, man. You got to hop in this. Hey, family this, first. This COVID thing is real, bro. No oh, yeah. doubt. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. No doubt. But I want right. to make sure I stay with my commitment. And of course, Big Head Mike over there. So, you know, yeah. you know, this yeah. guy hit me up. I'm like, oh, I got yeah, hit a yeah. he, he might have something to say tonight. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> All right, so right look, on, right on. look, we're not going to do this back and forth. Stop. Mike, I mean, uh, Jay, thanks, man. You have a good no one. Be safe. Yes, and um, we appreciate it. appreciate y'all. All right. And we'll, we'll link back up, too. I, I definitely make sure we link back up for the for the Mega Quan show, for sure. I and yo, you, by man. the way, Yo, y'all be careful tomorrow, man. It's going to be all chaos going down. So, you know, you know what I'm saying? Just, just, just keep your head on the swivel. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. We appreciate that, man. Keep your head on the swivel. No doubt. No doubt, that. man. Peace and love, man. Thanks for all, all right. the love and support, yeah, everybody. Bro. Check this Thank out. You. All right, man. Y'all right. be good. Yes. That was Jay Madison, everybody. From Uncle Nearest. Yes, indeed. Jay Mad. Ah, uh, man. So back road, to man. Cigar Mike. Oh, boy. Cigar yeah. Ambassador. Okay. Um, I take your word for it. Some people might call him an official. So let me tell you, I, I, I met, I met, I, I met Cigar Mike about eight years ago when I first first moved to Atlanta. I met him through my cousin, um, two-time world champion Yaya McLean. He has a book out right now. It's called um, Ali's Comeback. Shout out to Yaya. Um, what up, Yaya? The Untold Story. So I met him through there. Ever since then, we've been super cool, super tight, and. Um, he has been a wealth of knowledge as well. Um, but at the same time, as we all know, Cigar and Mike, Cigar and Mike ain't shit. Um, if you didn't know that, he'd tell you himself. Yes. That's a, that's that's actually 2019, 2020, and still ain't shit. Oh, that's right. <laughs> but we're in well, 2021. Right. What happens this year? It ain't gonna be shit. Ah, okay. <laughs> no, just, uh, I'm glad. Uh, I think we did we join that club. Oh. We joined that club two years ago, right? It's all down there. The ain't shit club. It's okay. all good. It's all <laughs> good. Ah oh, man. All right. So cigar Mike, tell us how you got into this industry. How you got into cigars and you know you really want to know that? I know <laughs> I know the story, but I, it sounds better come from you. Okay. Maybe. So the real Maybe. the real story, I I was a restroom attendant. So I was the guy with the with the mints and the and the black and miles and whatever, the colognes and everything in the okay. restroom. The napkins well, You're asking me for two dollars so I can two dollars get me a nap a paper towel. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's selling experience, man. There you go. Yeah. Those mints are hard to come by, special mints. I got gotcha. you. I get them from the old ladies at the church. Yeah. Oh, there so, you go. So that means you had to go to the church, which most people that was in so the restroom. Did you, you had to break outside. them apart too? I made them Because they was all stuck at the oh. church. Oh, I had to go in the church. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, that's Back to your story. Yeah. Right. yeah. So the, the guy who got me into it was like, hey, if you sell cigars, and at that time, you buy Mac and Noodles, Partagas, whatever, five or six dollars, and we sell them for twenty dollars, and that's that's all the math I knew. I was a hustler. I didn't smoke cigars, you know. So I would take a few cigars in there and I'd sell them. And I was like, yeah, cats are buying these cigars. So I used to just shop all over the place, you know, like I'm, you know, cigar store to me was like Walmart. I'm going to, <laughs> pretty much I'm going to service the trap. So I had to go get some, you know, 
get some more weight. There you go. And you have to re up. Yeah. And at a point, I started smoking cigars, and I was like, "Yo, this ain't bad." Okay. So I'd be in the bathroom. I mean, I'm like, I got to be here for like five or six hours. I might like, well smoke a cigar there or two. Go. Yeah, or four. So <laughs> he was like, "Yo, where you get that cigar?" I was like, "I know a guy." I mean, you know, all right, let me get one. Right, Twenty dollars. And I figured out that if I sold the cigars that I like, I could never lose because if nobody bought them, I could just smoke them. <laughs> Oh, you know smart man, smart man. You know, either way, I'm kind of like smoking for free. Right. Yeah. But I was buying a lot of cigars and I didn't I didn't think of it like that. I was buying a lot of mints. I was buying a lot of cologne. So I didn't so I'm in and out of cigar stores two or three times a week. I'm buying 10, 15, 20 cigars, 30 cigars, you know, but I would never stay in there. And and a and a good friend of who became a good friend of mine, like a big brother to me, his name is Al Govan. We call him Big Poppy. He he basically like assaulted me, he was like, yo, you know they put sofas in here for a reason. Sit down. So I sat down, you know, we smoked, you know, and I was like, well, I basically have nothing to do before I go to work, which is about nine o'clock, which is after the cigar store is closed. So every day I'd be hanging out in the cigar store I have a couple of cigars and I got to meet a whole lot of reps and, you know, a whole lot of the store owners because I was everywhere. And people started asking me questions about cigars and I was like, well, why are you asking me? You know, so I said, well, there's got to be some type of business to this. If, you know, people, maybe I'm a tobacco consultant. So I Googled it and there wasn't one. So I said, okay, well, that's me. There you go. And I, I've done events. I've been doing events since I was a kid. So one day I came up with this idea with three things I like. It was cigars, scotch, and chocolate. I said, well, I'm going to do an event. And you come in, I think it's like $40, $45. You got like three different scotches, three different chocolates, and a cigar. And because it's a whole different experience, you know what I'm saying? When you when you have that combination of things together mm -hmm. and it went well, I mean, we, well, well, for me, I mean, there's like 40 people there. 40, 45. Yeah, but that's a good start, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, to me, it was just something I did. I wasn't going to do cigar events. You know, yeah. I, just, I just did it. I made a little money. It was fun. Again, I got to keep what was left of the bottles and the cigars and the chocolate. So, it, you know, it was a win, <laughs> it was a win, win all around. I mean, yeah. it, it, it worked out. Yeah. And then people were like, yo, when's your next event? I was like, I don't know. And, you know, I did a couple more events. And then um, I was I was sitting in Club Onyx one day because that was my uh, default office at the time. Because <laughs> Shout out Onyx. Shout out Onyx. Is Onyx so, back yet? I'm just wondering. Yeah, I think it is. Oh, snap. Okay. So, but I was sitting there because <laughs> I could smoke That'd be another show. Yeah, that's another show. Yeah, that's another whole, show. That's a whole another show. Yeah. yeah we, might, we might get kicked off of that one. Yeah, probably. Nah, not if we do it on Zoom. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> so I, I would go on Onyx and I would sit there because I sit there during the day, you know, I have a little steak or hamburger or something, smoke a cigar, have a cup of drink, and nobody would bother me if I needed to take a phone call. or what. It wasn't like being at a restaurant or something. Right. And uh, a new manager came in and uh, he said, what the hell are you doing here? And I said, I looked at him and he's a white guy. I said, what the hell are you doing here? Man? <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I'd actually worked with him at, the gold club when I was a restroom valet and a promoter at the gold club. Okay. And he, he seeing, we talked and he said, yo, so why, don't, why don't you do a cigar man? Like, you, you know, cigars. I know you know how to promote. And I kind of brushed it off. I really didn't, I really didn't care about doing it. Mm. Cause he asked me like in April, my birthday was coming up in May. I want to have some fun or whatever. So I go back in there after my birthday and he's like, yo, come in my office. He's like, what are we going to do? I said, all right, what, what do you want to do? He said, we're doing an event. So what are you going to call it? I said, nah, smoker's retreat. He was like, cool. So he started writing stuff down. We put the flyer together. And my first event, which was January 2009, I had 42 people. And I knew every single one of them. <laughs> Shout out to smoker's retreat. Had. If you've never been to one of Cigar Mike's <laughs> smoker's retreat, you missed a treat. Yes, sir. Um, that's all I could say. We so your first one you said was 2009. 2009. My last one was 2019. 10 years. For 10 years. That's what's up. Yeah. I think it's time for an encore. There we go. There it is. <laughs> I'm just saying, Onyx has been closed. Onyx is about to open back up. Um, you stopped two years ago with, with something that you ran for 10 years. I think it's time for the rebirth of... Um, Smirkless retreat. I'm just saying. I'm pretty sure the people will uh, will appreciate that and like that. And people still ask about that event today. 
I know. Yeah. I know you had a passion for it because you don't do nothing for 10 years unless you got a passion. Well, you know what? It's it was it wasn't so much because I mean a lot goes into these events, yeah. you know, and the, the easy part and the fun part is the five hours that I'm there. Yeah. You know, the politics behind it and all that. But you know, and you guys know you were there. We had an amazing time and it wasn't Ooh, that, it was a, a strip club. This the, they kind of were I ain't never been in no strip club. Right. I'm sorry. Shoe museum. There you shoe, go. Museum. shoe museum. We did I've go to been the shoe there. Museum. I've been there. At least but, a couple times. But yeah. they were literally like maybe the third reason that people came. Yeah. You know, because it was once a month. You know, people came and, and it was during the day. I, yeah. And I, I smoked everywhere. So guys came from different parts of the city. But you may not seen this guy, you know, in a couple of months or he smokes over here. So it was kind of the place where everybody gathered. You know, you had groups of people over here, groups of people over here. People, I mean, a lot of celebrities came through just, just to hang out and be and be regular people. So, I mean, it truly was an amazing event, and I mean, I, I owe that event and a lot of the people who helped me get it started. I mean, the the credit for me being here today. That's yeah. what's up. I know I appreciate it going. I did that and the wings. <laughs> but they were small. They was like little pigeon wings. Hey, but they were that's right. they, they brought a lot of them though. So you had to bring a lot of them. You had how to. Many, how many pigeons? And shout out DJ it? Crunch. My man, DJ Crunch rocked with me for 10 years. They tried to get rid of my man. Yeah, they had to bring him back by popular demand. Bring him there back. Go. Bring See? him back. It was I, I remember. I remember. Customers. The customer was like, yo, I said, tell the manager. They were telling me, like, yo. So when we started, he DJ there, you know, two, three times a week. Then he he left. They had whatever difficulties, problems. He left, and we got to the point where like, yo, you got to bring him back once a month. We don't give a damn what you do the rest of the month, mm -hmm. but we 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 got to have crunch for here. this event. It, it crunch has to be it, here. It wasn't the same. It wasn't the same when crunch wasn't there. I mean, we had it. It wasn't just that he had a synergy with me. He had a synergy with the whole crowd. It, it, he he see, you know, Laquan, their whole crew come in. He gonna play some New York stuff. He gonna hit it with some Biggie. He gonna you know, What's so he he has and talk shit. Everybody, oh yeah, we, <laughs> we, 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 we did a lot of that. I almost got kicked out of my own job. <laughs> I hear yeah. somebody starting a petition talking about bringing bring back smokers retreat. Hey, I just go. I just saw it posted. By the way, you just I saw it. I did. Okay, hey. bring back smokers retreat. Hey, I think it should be, but y'all got to come out. And support yeah, too now. You got to support, yeah, come out, man. I, I mean, because every month you did your thing. You had different sponsors. You had different. Liquor yeah. brands, you had. Oh, there was cigars. always a drink special too. It was always a drink special, and then we had free cigars. Free, you get a, a swag bag. That's right. You had um, it was free to get in, so you yeah. had no no reason not to leave work. Exactly. Yeah, I had lots of reasons. Two dollar parking. $2 you had no, yeah, yeah. you had no <laughs> reason to, not and, to leave and listen, work. And listen, the parking was two dollars because people messed it up. Uh, I had the parking for free, and then I started spending half my night going. Uh, white Lexus uh, license plate number. Can you come move your damn car? That so uh, that's when we had, and they was gonna go to find out. I said, listen, if if you go to more than two dollars, I want to cut. Yeah, so they was like, yeah, we keep it at two dollars. Uh, <laughs> gotcha. But I mean, even our even our parking valet, even Musa, Musa knew everybody. Yeah. He knew who was coming. Yeah. I mean that, that. I mean, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, Musa was I, the man because I ain't. I never had to give him my keys. No. He, <laughs> no. he was like, bitch, you can give me two dollars. Yeah. Uh oh, always with the two dollars, ain't me. He always had the two dollars. Oh, that, oh so okay, that's he, he, that's the host. Yeah, look at him. They hit me up. They supposed to be on here watching. They hit me up. But nah, it was. I mean, you know how many days I scheduled my work around leaving at two thirty to make sure I could beat traffic to Absolutely. be there at three o'clock. It had to. Listen, had I, to. I I take credit for the initial creation <laughs> of the event. I can't take, I can't even really take credit for what it turned into. Gotcha. When I tell you, it, it was such an amazing, I mean, even the, the, the celebrities who came. Man, it you was, had hella celebrities come through. But but they were like, yo, what, you know, you're cool, what are we drinking? Let me buy you a drink. I'm like, all right. Mm -hmm. that part. I'm already fucked up. But, you know, it's how you almost got fired from your own job a few times. Was, yeah. <laughs> I got thrown out on my birthday. You remember? Oh, yeah. Remember, we had 248 people before 8 o'clock. At the strip yeah. club. At the shoe museum. Excuse me. Shoe That's right. Museum. Shoe museum. Because I wasn't at the strip club. Right. Shoe museum. Right. Gotcha. Yo, that is That's right. It was bananas. Crazy. Foolish. Yeah. 
but it was a good time. So we start a petition. We need 500 of y'all to sign a petition. It'll be out tomorrow. Bring back smoke. I need, I need 500 of y'all to show up at one time. That's what I need. <laughs> no, no, no. And, and, and pay them $2. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> got to do what you got to do, right? I'm with that. Yay. Um, that, that's in lieu of the GoFundMe. <laughs> right, right, right. Or the, or the cash they out. Didn't, they didn't have that at that time. I could have oh, did a GoFundMe. Right? Or, the, or the OnlyFans. Yeah, well, OnlyFans. No, they didn't have OnlyFans then either. I know, that's what I'm saying. They didn't have any of that. There's a lot of shoe models. It was No mad. TikTok? It was mad the last Friday of the month when I left. <laughs> I know they were. <laughs> when are you coming yeah. back? I'm not. Yeah. Not. See? Wow. He is a popular man, everybody. I'm it's not. all good. Most people turn their ring off, but you know, it's all good. <laughs> oh, it's <a> ring <laughs> That don't work for me. I don't know. I got to my airplane mode. Uh, so airplane mode. Right. Yeah, we're going to make this real something. He said he's going to make sure nobody, airplane. nobody. It, it's either that or do not disturb, but I always forget to take do not disturb off. Yeah, know. don't do that then. I get in trouble. So, Mike. Like, where you was I love, I love the story, though. Mike, we got a question. What's up, brother? What is in store? For Cigar Mike 2021, because a lot of people may or may not know you have a cigar. I do. It's called? It's called the Brand Especial by Cigar Mike. There we go. Love it. If you have not checked it out or don't have it or whatever, you need to get it. It's a good smoke. It's Um, pretty good. It is. It's actually a good smoke. Is that your baby mama? Just asking. No, no. My, my daughter, twenty three years old. <laughs> Somebody needs you really bad. If you, a, if you got a problem, call her. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, somebody uh, said even Ferrari parking was two dollars. There you go. Uh, you was able to park your Ferraris and everything else for two dollars. See what up, Phil? <laughs> what oh up, man. man. Some people say they paid a lot of tuitions there. Yeah. We want to go yeah. back and see the shoe models. You, you do. Know what Listen, some of them are lawyers now. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. <laughs> they done got I'm put sure. through all kind of school. Some I'm of them sure. have their own hair salons now. Hey, they got to do whatever they got to do, right? right? So what's in store, Cigar Mike, for 2021? What, what's we'll up try. and coming? Uh, a couple of things. So we got uh, that blend out. I'm working, I was in Miami we, while I was down there. We. Uh, we're discussing another blend to come out, um, hopefully by March, and that's going to be real limited. We're only doing a thousand of those cigars, so there'll be a thousand. They'll be broken down into five packs, so there, there'll only be two hundred five packs available for that Ooh. cigar because we we just we, we can't get uh, we can't source enough of materials to make it consistently. Mm. Yeah, we're just going to do it. We're just going to do it in and out. Okay. So but that'll go good. That. You know, been working on that. Um, uh, Atlanta Cigar Experience. Um, so we've been doing that for the last four years. So this year that has turned into the Atlanta Cigar Experience will be in September. The Chi Town Cigar Experience, shout out to my uh, my partner in Chicago, her cigar closet, uh, Miss Brandy Wheat. Chi Town Cigar Experience is uh, July 19th through the 25th. And then the November 20th weekend is the Cigar Mike Experience Vegas Takeover. And for my birthday this year, Cigar Mike's Nifty 50. Uh, the, oh, the, the, it'll be the 25th anniversary of my 25th birthday. So, okay. uh, so we're in negotiations now with a, um, with a small resort in the DR. So that's Memorial Day weekend. So we're going to take over. I may never be able to go to the DR again. Like a corn show going on the road. We yeah. will be in the <laughs> DR <laughs> for this show. Just say it. A, a live broadcast from the DR. You could do it. We will. We're trying to take over the whole compound. Listen, like for we'll, we'll do it yeah. in a heartbeat. So sound like Cigar Mike in 2021 would be busy. I'm trying to be big. I, I wasn't busy enough in 2020, man. I, I had a I had a furlough for myself for seven months. <laughs> that happens. Yeah. 2020 was a whole dumpster fire. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ooh. Yeah, that hurt. Yeah, yeah, that hurt. But yeah. I mean, shut down all your your events and whatnot. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you, there's no way to plan for a pandemic. <laughs> you Never. don't even they don't even have insurance for that. So no, you know, no. I mean, I just I had a I had a lot of time to myself. I could plan a lot of stuff. Well, you know what? They have pandemic insurance now. Yeah, for the next <laughs> pandemic. So yeah, so. <laughs> I'm sure. I just took a lot of time and made a lot of plans. And, you know, through this um, this virtual world, I, I also made a lot of friends. 
um, a lot of people who didn't know me or maybe they heard of me or something like that, you know, we got a chance to become really good friends. Um, you know, and since then we've traveled together, like my man is Sonya now, uh, Jahar from Cigar Table Talk, uh, Brandy from Her Cigar Closet, uh, Bella Cigar Picks, uh, Greg from the G Spot, Eric from Black Star Line. You know, we've all, since then we've, we've met up, traveled together, events, you know, stuff like that. So it was actually, I mean, I guess that would be the, the, the good part of the bad time. Right? Okay. You know. Well, cool. So listen, today's show was all about my man, Cigar Mike. Um, we appreciate you coming through. We appreciate Jay Madison from Uncle Nearest coming through. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, that was, I mean, we got two great lessons. We got an education about Uncle Nearest. We found out a lot more about Cigar Mike and what he has going on and how he got started and the petition to bring back Smokers Retreat in 2021. And we Nifty, keep supporting Cigar Mike all That's day. right. Nifty 50 oh, yeah. down in DR. Going to DR. Cigar Experience in <laughs> September. <going> DR. <laughs> right? September, right? September, yes. Yeah, September. Chicago in July. So, Chicago in July. And Vegas in November. Vegas in November. The Mega Kwan birthday celebration next month at a city oh. cigar. Oh, they, yeah. they want the contact info for your cigars, by the way. Uh, the contact info. You can just hit me up on Instagram. I'm cigar at cigar underscore Mike. And I'll get you with my distributor. Okay. There we go. See, Thank you. that's how that's how we do that. Or you can stop by City Cigar at 230 Thornton Road and buy you one. There you part. go. Because they got some. Yeah. In fact, they ordered some more. That's right. See what I'm saying? You know? So if, I mean, if you haven't had it, you in the city of Atlanta, you want to stop by and grab one, that's a great place to stop by and get in. Shout, shout out to the city of Atlanta. Y'all been a big help. Y'all been a big support to me. We do uh, what we can. You know, y'all let me come through and, you know, rock a couple of things. And, you know, yeah. Cigar experience. Uh, yeah. The ugly sweater party. We ugly sweater time. party. We had a great time for that. Yeah, that, that was fun. Was, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. They were mad at me. They said, you didn't wear an ugly sweater. I said, well, I'm, I'm the host. I didn't want to be competition. <laughs> I, you can't use that I use that for every event <laughs> that I don't dress up for <laughs> right, I, I, I don't want to be competition right, I'm right. not that guy well listen good people I am about to right now um, add hold on I'm going to grab it first I am going to add the link please come check us out to our Zoom. I, I got it. I got I got it. I, I, know I just want to make sure I, I hit yeah. this first so that we can finish the conversation. With that about link the, should work. It better work. Right. Yeah. I, and I just want you to know, my, my friends, see, let me and be preemptive. As well. So my friends are a bunch of trolls. Oh, it's okay. So, yeah. So they're going to come and they're going to come after me, but I'm, I'm going to mash them all. I love them. Ah, okay. I love oh, them. Wonderful. We love it. Gotcha. No problem. Good people. We're logging out of here. We're going to be live on Zoom for the rest of the show. Thank you. Come for, over. Thank you, Cigar Mike, for joining us this evening. Oh, thank man. you. Thank you. For we appreciate you. Thanks for the meal, too. Absolutely. Man. Delicious. Check us out, everybody, on Instagram, <laughs> Facebook. What? Everybody got to talk about my food. Thank you. I it appreciate good. it. I got to go play. I think man. that's why real, people that's come real on man our show. cook right there. I think that's real why people cook. come on our show because I'll be cooking I'm steaks. Like tonight, we had steak, potato, and um broccoli. Broccoli. Actually, we yeah. had a. He half a bron we had half a brontosaurus, y'all. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you about this guy. He has chives. Yes. Everybody, you gotta, you gotta understand something. Everybody doesn't have chives. Most places you, know? you go get salt, butter, salt pepper, butter. maybe some yeah. bacon, maybe, maybe it's, it's, bacon, and the, the diced, the diced onions, <laughs> and the green onions. You'd be lucky if you get some sour cream. Hey, but right. you yeah. had sour cream, cream and chives. You had it. and Hello. hold on. And soft butter. And so, the butter was already soft. I don't know if you know, just right through there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Like yeah. that. It was awesome. I never knew. Hey, stop telling that. people that because then they're going to be expecting. Like, yo, can I come to Mac? No, I'm not cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ordering wings. We got, <laughs> next week's show will be featuring Popeyes. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> we got an eight piece box and some sweet tea. Old Pizza tell. Hut, Papa John's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good people. We out of here. Meet us on Zoom. We appreciate y'all. Again, um, as Steve said, um, check us out on Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Mega Quan Show. And again, we thank you.